Welcome back to Scorch TV. Ladies, I hope you're sitting down because we've got Louis Bello in the studio to serenade you. And apparently Scorch too. So we're here with uh, a Boston musician who's up for a lot of good stuff, which you're going to talk about. This is Louis Bello. Louis. Yes. How's it going? Louis. You just want to say that. You, you can't just say Louis. You got to go, Louis. Uh, man, uh, there's so much I really want to talk to you about. Uh, first of all, as somebody that does the same thing, I love the fact you consider yourself the king of self-promotion. Yes, I do. And, 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 and to explain that, like, what do, what do you do that makes you the king as opposed to some of the uh, lower classes? Well, it's also in my own mind, so I have a kingdom in my mind where I promote. No, I, um, no, I just, I, I always am constantly, constantly hustling, you know, like everything, whether it's movies, whether it's um, videos, whether it's writing for other artists. So I, there's never a day where I'm not doing something that pertains to promoting myself or the people around me, so. A lot of people remember their firsts. You know what I mean? Your first gig you played out. What was the first gig that you actually played out? Uh, my first gig. Good, bad. I mean, big, small, good, bad. It doesn't make a difference. Just your first gig. Yeah, I, actually down by, uh, I don't even know if the place is, I forget the name, but it was back when like the, the new kids and all those guys were doing all their thing. And I did a gig with a few of my buddies at this place down by, um, down by the waterfront. Um, down in Boston, and uh, it was a small club, and there was like, you know, 10 other acts went on there. I sang awful. It was like the worst thing I ever did, and it kind of discouraged me a little bit. But and when I went home, I started thinking about, like, the atmosphere, those people cheering for the good acts, you know, yeah. not for me. <laughs> but I said, you know, I want to get there so I have actually more than two people in the audience, you know, my mom and dad watching, and uh, actually liking my music. So it was, like, it was a good and bad experience, but it actually kind of catapulted my career. And you mentioned family, you mentioned your mom and your dad. Uh, we were told, well, mention sis, but don't mention sis, because you guys got this brother-sister thing yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, let's, let's leave the name out. Leave we that, don't have to that, girl, name. that girl's name. Yeah, the yeah. sister, yeah. We'll, yeah, the we'll sister. just say sissy. Because I have two sisters, too. It's, oh. it's, it's funny. I have so you want to talk about the other sister who's yeah, not a musician? Danielle's Is that okay? awesome. Danielle's the best, yeah. Danielle. She's, uh, actually she's a, a, totally uh, not in show business. She's a cook. You know, she's, she's unbelievable. Great Playing the role of Louie's musical sister today is his other sister, Danielle. Yes, exactly, exactly. No, at least... Lisa's, Lisa's cool. I, I just oh, decided not to oh, drop geez, oh, you drop the name. I just decided not to bring her today because she kind of tends to take over all the, the shine. Another yeah. time, I'd love to have her and you oh, on the show. Oh, definitely, definitely. you got to get her on. Uh, let's talk about the disc. Uh, the disc is called, I don't know if you can get this, but Chasing Rainbows is the name of the disc, you know what I mean? So uh, tell us about this. The bar that's on the cover, because uh, King of Self-Promotion, did you actually go to this bar and say, look, I I'll tell people this is your bar if you let me take a picture uh, here. That's, that, that, that is um, West End Johnny's, actually, in Boston. Yeah. And the owner there is is great unbelievable guy and uh yeah and that that's that kind of part of my whole style is that i connect with people and network with people that like to create and we kind of barter and trade and just use each other for self-promotion and i think that's that's the way you do a lot of people think that they have to have all this money to create you know th their whole persona but yeah. it, it's really you do need the money at the end but if you if you're smart if you network if you, you know if you have a good personality you can actually kind of trade things off with people and, and get what you need and help them at the same time so what's been your best avenue of promotion would you say your best avenue of getting your own word out there what would you say um, I think it's that the whole old school door to door you know doing shows traveling around doing shows um, just building your fan base just like playing that. out just playing out and meeting people you know because some mm -hmm. people play out and then they just do the show and they leave. You know, you have to go early, talk to people. You have to, you have to play the show, get off stage, get Hang people's out. email addresses, talk to them, ask them how their family is. I mean, you have to be personal because, and you can't be fake about it. You know, you have to sincerely want to do that. And I think that builds your whole. So you're talking about literally touching people. There's a lot to be said for that. Yeah, or it just you're depends. shaking somebody's hand after the show, thanking yeah. them for being there. There's certain places I don't touch them unless they tell me, but I will shake their hand. Right, yeah. right. Well, we'll get, we, have, we have a lap dance segment coming up later. We'll nice. And that's that. why, if you notice, none of us are shaking your hand. <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, we're all done with what shaking. About you, Leo? We're all done with shaking hands. Uh, so now you're up for Boston Music Awards. It's your third time yes. being, uh, being nominated. But like you said, third time's a charm, it's as a, we say here it's in a New charm. England. Yeah. Third time's a charm. <laughs> Does this year feel different? I've learned, like, the, I've learned to like, take it as like everything is a positive. And I'm very excited just to be, you know, to, to be recognized in your own hometown where I grew up and, mm. you know, for all the traveling I do and coming back here and things like that, like to have people here, somebody say, oh, I think, you know, Louis is a great vocalist and let's, you know, let's put him in the nomination. I think it's awesome. It's, a, it's an honor. Now, speaking of that, 
because I have no problem admitting I'm damn good at what I do. <laughs> uh, do, do, you, do you like what you do? Are you proud of what you're doing? Are you happy with your product that you're putting out? Are you happy I'm with very, it? No, I'm very happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm we very all joke about it, but you're, you're happy with what you're doing. Yeah, because as artists, you know, we put in, you know, we put in a lot of time and effort. And when you put that album out or you put that video out, you know, that, that's your whole life's work into that one project. You know, it's just every year of learning and making mistakes and finding new producers, writing new songs. And when you put it out, I mean, yeah, I'm definitely proud of, of that. And, you know, going back to something you said a little while ago, musicians, a lot of times, they get big. And when a, a band gets, like, you know, buku mondo big, they're it dictated to them is how much time they get to spend with their fans and meet and greets, et cetera. But still, uh, even at the meet and greets, a lot of bands become belligerent. DBs, if you will, yeah. and they just seem to totally forget Nickelback. Uh, they just seem to <laughs> totally forget, uh, you know, where they came from. Right. And there's too many bands like that. And that's, you know, you're not, you can tell you won't get like that. You know? No, I, I don't ever want to get like that. But you that. would like the opportunity to get like that. I would I like assume. to, yeah. Like, you, like he, uh, he said that he would be very happy to sell out given the opportunity. Yeah, well, you, anybody would. Yeah, of yeah. course. Look at what you're doing. You're sitting on the couch on this show, man, you know, giving yeah, up a million dollars. I'm still waiting to sell out. Yes, there's no exactly. sellout yet. Man, I mean, <laughs> now here's a really good question, and and I'd love to talk about uh, the Boston Music Awards again. There's other musicians: Bill Genovitz, uh, John Pauhita, uh Christian uh, McNeil, and uh, Will Daly, all up for the same uh, best male vocalist category with you. Who would you not mind coming in second to? Any one of them, or, or somebody in particular? Uh, there's nobody in particular. I say any one of them because to get nominated, I mean. It's, it shows that you're out there doing something. You know, whether you're good or bad, whether you're as good as I am singing or as good as I am promoting, you're out there doing something. I like that. Something that actually gets you noticed. So, yeah. you know, anybody on that list, you know, and I know how it goes at the end of the day. As many votes as you get, you know, as, as much credit as you get. Right. Somebody's always pulling the trigger, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying, you know, that in a bad way, but... Whoever's going to win is going to win. And I, You're I'll saying it's a bag it. job, Louie. No, I'm not saying it's a bag job at all. I'm not going to say that. No, because I'm definitely not going to say well, that. I'll but say it. I'm just saying that at the end of the day, if you get nominated in that category, any one of us could win, and, right. and I'd be fine with that. You know, it's a, it's a fun night to go down there and see all your peers and hang out and shake hands. You know, it's, it's, the nomination's cool. Uh, married guy, girlfriend, anything like that? I got a girlfriend. Yeah, I uh, was I'm, married. I'm uh, looking anymore. at I'm looking at your eyes and the lights. I'm wow, you know, you got some dreamy eyes, man. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's a handsome yeah. devil, isn't he, Scorch? No, his 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 greenish blue eyes are sparkling. They in the are lights. dreamy, really. So I'm thinking, I'm not even hitting on him. I'm just gonna <laughs> hit on him. No, trust me, if I was gonna hit on you, I'd be pulling out my money because that's the only way I have to pick up tea. <laughs> is by, hey, hey Louis, nice to see you again. Here's that twenty bucks uh, from last time. Here's twenty more for today. But no, I'm I'm looking at you saying, oh, you must be all right with the chicks. Tell us about. Chicks. Chasing rainbows, because you basically, that's a, thats pretty much a life story, you said, huh? Yeah, no, it's a life story. I've been in, doing this for a long, long time, and uh, Chasing Rainbows was kind of uh, that whole, all of us artists, whether you're a painter, a photographer, a video, your music, you're always chasing after that 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 dream, that end result, and all the problems that come in between with, in relationships, in life, with work, you know, chasing those dreams is a sacrifice. You sacrifice on all fronts. When right. you're going after something and you have one goal and you're focused on it. So, Chasing, the whole album is actually about the ups and downs, the fun parts, the sad parts. And so I'm, I'm really proud of this album because it kind of tells a little bit about my second half of my life going after this, this dream. Uh, sexy Love. Sexy Love. Tell us about it. Sexy now love. we're back to the dreamy eyes. I yes. Well, yeah. yes. You know what? I'm comfortable with my sexuality, man. I, you know, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm thank impressed. You. I think you've really evolved. Well, thank you very much. All You're right. just mad that I didn't hit on you that way the first time I, I saw you. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Sexy Love. Kid. Tell what us about Sexy Love. Sexy Love. Sexy Love is actually a track about, you know, you've been in the club. You're going out and you see, you know, you see a really beautiful girl and just kind of start dreaming about what it would be like to, you know, to be with that girl, you know, in that moment. And, um, and that's kind of, and I wanted to have a fun Jamiroquai type vibe on that track. So, um, the producer, Alex Gordese, uh, got, we got together and he came up with this really nice bass line. And the first thing that popped off my head was sexy. And, you know, and I kind of think of that love story. So it's really like a fun type of you know. And it's like a conceptual disc, like a Zappa disc that tells a story because the next track after that, after trying to pick up a hot chick at a bar, is called Rich Man. Yes. Uh, you know what I mean? So that actually... Certainly makes it a lot easier. He's like, so I told this hot chick I'm a rich man. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, and Rich Man's kind of like after you've already, yeah. you know, had that chick, 
or whatever chick. And, you know, it's kind of like a couple years down the line. And it's kind of rich man's like just telling her how much you love her and how much you appreciate. So rich man talks about all the things she does for you so that she doesn't forget. Because in this business, when you have somebody with you, I feel like you have to const- you have to remind them how much you care because your time is not always as focused as like a, a normal nine to five person yeah. right. would focus on their girl. So right. rich man's kind of like a reminder, like, hey, I know I'm not around as, as much but these are the things I appreciate about you, so. And I'll tell you, the one I really dug, uh, when they gave me the disc a while back, like, check this out, he's gonna be on the show soon. Uh, the best I ever had. Uh, best I ever had? F- great tune, man, good for you. Best I ever had, is, is, it's a funny, I won't get too detailed behind that, but the song is actually, if you listen all the way to the end, it's actually a very sarcastic song. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's kind, of, uh, it's kind of talking to this girl who left you, because maybe she left you because of your business, or maybe she left you because she found something else, and you're doing really well now. And you kind of talking to her, and I'm telling her that, you know, you were the best I ever had, you know, but I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah. So thank it's you very much for everything you did for me. Right, but right, right. I'm, I'm having fun, and so nice. the video actually for that is going to be hilarious. <laughs>